Y'all good? All glory to the most high God. It's real though. That song real, you know, I'm a father. I got a wife. I got three beautiful children. I got a beautiful wife and three beautiful children. <laughs> and, um, and I've been an artist for a long time. And I felt like, you know, getting married and, and um, you know, becoming a father, I, I would have to kind of give up my dream, you know what I'm saying, in order to support them. And But by the grace of God, he's made a way so that I can support my family and do my dream, which is a blessing. And I guess because it, there's value in, in this, you know what I'm saying? It's not like me. I'm just trying to go out, rap, become some celebrity, become some superstar, nothing like that. Um, I honestly, I really want to give people hope. I really want to give people the message of the cross, the message of Christ, and have them find themselves in that. Because this world is a dark place without God. It's truly a dark place without God. I've been in that place, hopeless, and only having him. Um, you know, John mentioned earlier I got shot. I was 15 years old, and um, coming back from the store, and I was going back into the projects where I lived, where I lived in the projects. I mean, no people should live like this. But, um, but unfortunately, um, for black people in South Philadelphia, this was one of the only resorts living in the projects. And we lived in the projects that was at the bottom of, it was like, it was like all these, you know, these different communities out here. Then, then to, the, to, the all, to the far left was like the stadium and all of that. And, but then to the far right, it was like this little underground kind of community that was the projects. And this is where we lived. You had to go through a tunnel to get in there. This tunnel was, I mean, terrible. These, these are not living conditions. The, the lights in the tunnel would work sometimes. Sometimes they wouldn't. You had to go through this tunnel and get in and out the projects. If you went through the tunnel at nighttime, you know, with bags, you were almost guaranteed to get robbed or something. So whenever we went to the supermarket or the store, I used to wear a book bag. and put my groceries in my book bag. But anyway, I remember coming home, middle of the day, you know what I'm saying? And I had these two guys walking in front of me. I didn't think nothing of it, you know what I'm saying? These two guys walking in front of me. We get down to the tunnel. They're like 50 feet in front of me. Next thing you know, they get to the tunnel first, and I'm walking behind them, and they turn around and start walking towards me. I'm like, ah, oh, here we go. Now, you know where I'm from, this is, it goes down. You know, I've been robbed before at gunpoint, you know what I mean? It, it wasn't really... You know, I was just, I wasn't going to cry, and I wasn't going to run. <laughs> it was just going to be what it was going to be. And so, you know, I just kept walking. The guy walked close to me, and he tried to bump me. As soon as I turned around, when he tried to bump me, he had already brandished the weapon. I was like this. And then I tried to run. Now I was like, he, he got a gun. Now I'm going to run. <laughs> so I tried to run. I made, I took like two, three steps or whatever. The one shot hit my hit my leg. So when you talk about it's funny thing about Thizzle, the way Thizzle got shot is the exact same way I got shot. My mine was a little more severe, but he got shot in his femur on his right. I got shot in my femur on my left. It hit my leg and broke my femur bone immediately. I fell. I couldn't go nowhere. Guy stood over me. Another seven shots. Hit me two more times. Once in the side, went straight through. And um hit my uh, my rectum, so I had like a classy bag on my stomach, pole in my leg. But the reality is he shot at me eight times all together, point blank range, and only three hit me. I said, wow, Lord, that's a blessing. I'm not even going to count it as him, as him being a bad shot, which he probably was. <laughs> Don't nobody in the hood take shooting lessons, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> But I look at it as the hand of God moving it, moving it, moving it. Because there ain't no reason why he shouldn't hit me in the back of the head. My back, I'm laying, I'm literally laying there. Uh, it's not a hard shot. I'm not moving. I'm not in motion. I'm laying there. Pow, pow, pow. All you have to do is hold the gun still. Pow, 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 pow. You, can, you know what I mean? It didn't work. By God's grace. You know what I'm saying? So. I don't even know why I told that story, but why I tell it? For hope. I was laying on the ground. <laughs> Y'all, I was laying on the ground. 
Now, mind you, the lady that we all call the crazy lady, this lady will always talk about Jesus. Every time you turn around, Jesus, yelling in the Lord and young man, the Lord loves you. And we're like, all right, all right, Miss Mona, okay, all right, okay. Can we get back to playing basketball now? I just want to tell you, all right, all right, okay. And um, so I blacked out, came to Miss Mona, that we all call crazy. She's over top of my body, praying relentlessly. My mother, the person that introduced me to God and gave me the gospel at a, at a young age, she couldn't even pray. I mean, I don't know if she did, but I know she was screaming and just like, oh, my God. And she was hysterical, which I'm a father now. I can imagine. She's, she's screaming. The lady is praying. And something inside of me, this is the enemy. The Bible says that the enemy is roaming around like a roaring lion seeking someone for whom he can devour. The enemy will use him, his demons and all that stuff to convince you to confess things and say things and do things. That's the only, he, he don't have no power but what he does is convinces you to do something. That's where he gets his power. You give it to him. And so it, I just felt him I just felt something telling me Say that you're going to die. And it felt like, you know, I don't know. When, you, when something happened and you think of a movie, it's like you find yourself in, in something that happens in a movie, like you're in that circumstance. You've seen it in a movie before. I just was like, yeah, I'm going to die. You know, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm dying, I'm dying. That's how I felt like, I said, Mom, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to die. She said, no, you're not, baby, you're not going to die. I don't know. And then I heard this voice. I don't know where it came from. It wasn't, it didn't come out the sky. It just was there. It was the calmest voice I ever heard in my life. It was so stable. It wasn't no, you're not going to die. This is God speaking. You are not going to die. No, it wasn't, you're not going to die. No, it was just this stern, firm voice that said, you're not going to die. I just believed it. And, and ain't that like God? Like you hear his voice. Just, oh, I just believe that. Like I can't even find it. It, it means to not believe it. Like it was just, whoa, I'm not going to die. I get to the hospital. They cut me open. You know, emergency surgery, all that stuff. I wake up. My mother said, I talked to the doctor. He said, if you had a guy here 60 seconds later, you would have been dead. Damn, a minute. But the Lord just gave me hope in that. Just showed me like, no, take my word for it. Don't, don't take how you feel about this thing. Take my word. Amen? Amen. And so because of that, I need to, you know, I, I got to testify of his goodness, man. I got to talk about, you know, the man that he's made me.